So my topic is, so it's the allure of the ethical criminal, which I think we all know is like a very popular thing in fiction nowadays. But I think it's a little bit, not even beyond that, but a little bit of a sidestep from that, where it's not even necessarily the allure of the ethical of the ethical criminal, but the way that you get yourself on the side of criminals, because criminals are very common protagonists in all of fiction now. You know, so you've got like, like Breaking Bad, I think is probably the go-to example, where Walter White is a bad guy. He's the bad guy the entire time, but we're on his side because we have like sympathy for him, just based on the way he was mistreated and the way his character set up early on. You and know, it's from um, his perspective. And it's from his perspective, which I think helps a lot. And that wouldn't necessarily work with a completely unlikable and irredeemable character, but we get likable and redeeming qualities about him beforehand at the very least you're going to have sympathy for the person he set up to be early on so i think that's something that you need and a lot of that will come down to things like character motivation so for walter white his character motivation is that he is dying and would not really spoilers for breaking bad because it's the beginning of the show it's the setup but he's dying and he wants to leave enough money for his family to be okay and then mild spoilers eventually it kind of be evolves beyond that and it turns into he just likes it so you know it, is it is i don't know are you saying like the main character or are you saying one of the main characters because there's an allure to villainous main characters like Homelander from The Boys, for example. He's not ethical Oh, yeah, in the yeah. Slightest. Well, I, I was yeah. going to get or into that. Or in the middle too. of that spectrum, you have like a Han Solo who's like not the protagonist, but he's kind of like the cool, like chaotic neutral or true neutral, like side character. Right. That kind yeah, of becomes well, I, everyone's favorite. I think that's what makes this movie so interesting to at least look at is that that's kind of what they're going for with all of them because it's a whole thing full of criminals. It's a whole, like, a whole heist team or whatever. And what's really seem what really feels like it's missing with all of them is that character motivation because you've got the main protagonist who we're supposed to be rooting for, and then you've got these other characters who, at the very least, during the course of the movie, we're supposed to like enough to enjoy watching them, and have some level of at least understanding. That that's another point. What are we given if we're going to be spending half of the movie with these characters? What are we given to like them? exactly the problem are we supposed to like them exactly the problem that's part that, that that's what i was going to get into was the the fact is like like i was saying before the most we learn about is buddy and even then like we don't really learn anything concrete about him and we're still kind of seeing just that surface level of like you said he's crazy and horny and angry and that's kind of his whole thing and even then like we're not like we don't know like they kind of set it up to be like we're going to we're going to kind of get a hint of why he's doing this what in his life makes him want to do this and therefore makes him interesting enough to watch and we don't get that with him we get even less of that with darling because as we said the female characters are writ are incredibly underwritten in this movie cuz if you think about it, there's two and lily james's character is also very underwritten which also sucks because she's arguably the only morally like morally right character in the movie simply because she's not a criminal well what about you know? joe yeah joe, joe i forgot about i actually forgot about joe i was thinking about the female character specifically but you're right joe also um but again that also feels like it feels almost like that kind of thing was shoehorned in as a way to make baby more sympathetic which i think is where a lot of the issues come in with how they're trying to sell these characters is so many things feel shoehorned in to set up the ending that Edgar Wright wanted. So especially with like as you kind as you see in the end where like all of these different witnesses are saying like, oh, he seemed like, you know, like he cared and like he gave me my purse back or he, said, he tried I'm to sorry. warn me away and let me go. And like, you know, it was a way of like showing like, see, baby was actually a good guy the whole time. And this is the checklist of how it's done. I think that it made it then feel upon, like, in retrospect, that all of those were just moments to set that up as opposed to part things that are actually part of Baby's personality. Because you see at the beginning, like, 
he kind of doesn't seem to have any issue with his criminal life and we don't have any indication that he's been trying to escape from it except to get out of debt with doc but then he makes the choice to go back and yes obviously doc threatened his family or you know the people he cares about or whatever but at the same time i think that you know he was also kind of feeling like well i'm just delivering pizzas like this isn't great right you know right that does so it's that's like, a weird beat where he seems like disappointed to be taking that like what was his plan otherwise a what little bit gonna... yeah yeah and i think it comes down to like structurally it was an odd choice to not make the whole movie be about this kind of like well i'm getting out of debt with doc no he by the end of the first act i think he is out of debt and so he could really just walk away and honestly the first thing he should have done if he really wanted to get away was leave the city him and Joe could have gotten in the car, they could have taken Lily James with them, and they could have just gone somewhere else. And given how good of a driver he is, I feel like he could have gotten away from Doc. Like, fairly easily. And he didn't do that. So there's an extent to which Baby isn't running from this life exactly. And yes, he has a problem with the the morally insane things, like the fact that Bath just kills people whenever he wants. Or that, you know, honestly, Buddy and Darling kind of do the same thing. And like, Darling herself, they just kind of portray as, like, very crazy in a way that, like, I don't, I don't necessarily love because, like, it makes it so that it feels like there's no, there was no thought put into her character other than being, like, Buddy's girlfriend who also is, like, pushing him to go even crazier. If anything, it seems like they tried to make Buddy seem more like he was hesitant about particular things. But we get right. no indication of that from the ending because then obviously she dies and then he just goes off the rails. And while that brings out what I think is the best performance in the movie, which is John Hamm losing his shit and just going like sweaty and, and nuts and like, I'm just going to kill you. The level of which he is so calm and collected while also being completely unhinged at the same time is kind of what made me love him as an actor outside of Mad Men which is kind of what I'd seen him in before that, you know? It's really cool. But in the movie itself, it makes his character feel very thin because it feels like anything that was there was just meant to set that up. If you're not going to make them likable outside of casting, at least make them funny. Like, I remember laughing at... I think some of them are. Yeah. Yeah. I think Jamie Foxx is. Maybe that's just Jamie Foxx being. It was him. just Jamie Foxx, like, dude. His I, I, I think he's excellent. Yeah. This. It was 100% he's pretty good. just Jamie Foxx. He's pretty good. I like him. He, he's, he's pretty funny. I like Flea. Flea's pretty good in this. I remember laughing at JD, uh, Lanny June, yeah. the the Asian guy at the yeah. job, too, a lot. Um, I, me me and my just... family quote the hats thing sometimes. <laughs> Hat. <laughs> Used to say, hey. That I, that I can really get jobs from that. <laughs> I forgot about that. So I took out the E. That's pretty good. Or the, or the Mike Myers. To increase my the, Mike, hats. the Mike Myers and Michael Myers confusion. That was great. That's um, one of my favorite scenes. Honestly, mm-hmm. it's so good. Um, it's one of those that, like, they put it in the this trailer, is from Halloween but Store. it still holds up. It's, it's cute, but that's what the more of the movie should have been. Like, Yeah. There's some great moments, though. I meant to bring this up earlier. Like, this isn't really on topic, but there's a lot of moments in this that I was noticing this time that just, like, are a lot more entertaining than they need to be. You could just do this, like, generic scene or, like, generic moment, but he adds, like, a little bit in there. Like, Mm -hmm. one of my favorite moments is um, Kevin Spacey, like, gives the backstory of, like, baby stealing from him, then he goes... Wow, I just drew this whole map. Oh well, yeah, that was, that was great. That was pretty goddamn impressive. <laughs> <laughs> like... That's a really good moment. I honestly had forgotten about that till I saw it. I'm like, that's really funny. All right, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll give. But I, I think that's credit to the actors. Like, the the they they made those mo- moments really funny. Jamie Fox uh, a lot, but again, that's just I've seen Jamie Fox in a lot. He's one of my favorites. He. That's and just so him. versatile. He's played like such a oh, wide yeah. range of characters. Mm-hmm. He was like, electro. Yeah. And Even just between Spider-Man this, he was electro, electro, collateral, and soul. He was like, oh, what a soul. broad spectrum of like different types of people. He was a vampire hunter in Day Shift. He was great in that too. Ooh, um, I didn't see that yet. I liked it. I enjoyed it. 
Um, Dave Franco is also very funny in it. Action Pack, too. I think it's the same, uh, what's it, what's it called? The same, like, choreographers as John Wick. Oh, okay. It's the Hellski Boys. Yeah. That's kind of, um, that, that's interesting. Like, I'd love to, because that, that could work well in so many genres, especially, but especially, like, a vampire action movie. Yeah, it was good. Like, imagine them doing Blade. Mmm. Mmm. The film that will mm. never get made, unfortunately. But. Jesus. The one that we want. So Somebody's badly. signing on and then signing off the next day from the project every other day. It's, it's uh. getting crazy. Oh. Anyway, I, I did want to jump back into, because mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about Baby more specifically. Yeah. About how, like, I understand what Edgar Wright wanted to go for with this character. But I think that, again, like, it's just, the writing is a little too messy to put us on his side. So I think, like you were saying, Jelani, I agree with you that he's a little obnoxious early on. Especially, like, that first scene's really cool, but then we don't really get a lot to get on his side except for, like, that little checklist. Like, obviously, he's got Joe. We learn a little bit about the stuff with his mom. Now he's got a pretty girl that he likes to talk to and stuff like that who reminds him of his mom, which is weird, but more on that later. Um, yeah, the, Oedipus complex. Exactly, yeah. which is it's very common, <laughs> but the level to which they lean into it is it was a little much for me, especially on this go around. But I'll, again, I'll get into that later. Um, uh, bro, I was I was gonna heat up because I I was gonna when I first saw I didn't think of Joe as the, his as his parent. I was just like, oh, so this is a all white Atlanta, and one of the only black characters we see in this movie, uh, the main character is a white savior for. Okay, this That's is what true. We're doing. That's, That's a very good point. And I think it's meant to be his foster James dad. Fox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's his foster. I learned later that it's, it's his foster, foster dad. dad. That's yeah. when I. But I think I learned that from Wikipedia. Down. I don't think that I learned that from the movie. No, he itself, says it. There's a lot. Which is another There's thing a, that I. Somebody hate. definitely says mm-hmm. the word foster dad. Okay, he does. There, okay, so. mm-hmm. okay. Then I. I think baby calls him his foster yeah. dad to Deborah at some point. Then I must have. Then I must have missed that because, like, as nice that is, like, it's almost tacking on too many things. So, like, you've got the whole foster dad thing, right? But we don't learn anything about Joe as a character, really. Except oh, yeah, that, like, he that cares too. about Baby, but he's upset that he's a criminal. Again, writing it very as a very one-note, very tropey thing. Then you've also got the stuff with his mom, which was only a little confusing because I kind of didn't understand at what point he lost his mom. I don't really remember if we learned how he lost his mom, either. It's the car accident. accident. Oh, there was a car. Oh, yes, there was a car. Okay, so it was the tinnitus thing. Okay, that, that that makes more sense. But I feel like, yeah, okay, that makes more sense. But I don't necessarily know, like, when that happened to you. Because we also learned, like, he was boosting cars as a kid. So was that when he was already in the foster system and he knew Joe? Or was it before that? I think that is left ambiguous. It's a little yeah. ambiguous. And I think that, again, they're, they're adding in so many different things to make us empathize with him and to get us on his side that they all kind of just muddle together a little bit too much they they were layering it on thick because they didn't do enough in the beginning in his intro for me um, exactly yeah they they especially in that coffee shop scene too like that could have mm-hmm. been a moment where we kind of see his personality come out more like even a little save the cat moment like maybe he picks right up something that somebody drops even a small thing or like he gives it or like he gives a kid like a like a free like a free something like a like a piece of candy or something like he uses his he steals a a lollipop and throws it to some kid or something like that like something a little dumb and on the nose maybe but something that would have made me kind of understand who he was other than like he drives really good and he does music like it he almost (laughs) feels like he would be a cool side character in a different movie Mm. wow yeah, I think a better approach maybe to just his, like, personality is, like, have him open up a lot more when he's around Deborah. Because I think you can make a, like, I think a really understandable approach to him could be, like, he doesn't feel like he belongs with these criminals. Like, these aren't really his people. So he's, like, really quiet and doesn't really say anything and doesn't... Didn't like, somebody say that to him at some point? This isn't your world or something? Yeah, well, I think a few... I think it said a few times. Yeah. But even, like, somebody says, you know, why they call him baby? Because we're waiting on his first word. So to me, that's like, okay, <laughs> cool. Like, if that's his thing, if he's just, like... If he's only here because he needs to be, then, like, yeah, I get why he's not trying to make friends with anyone. He doesn't. He doesn't like any of these people. 
But then when he meets Deborah and like finds somebody he does vibe with, show him opening up a lot more. Like if he's like he's got this like he he makes his little mixtape things like his beats. Have him show her that. I think that's a, a really easy scene to to add in that just like or have him just kind of like nerd yeah. out about it. He, he like, does she, say the tape have them be at his apartment or whatever. Like we never see her go to his place or anything or like know where she lives even like but if that was something like that she found and started playing that would have been really interesting but instead we kind of see him mixing them on his own mm-hmm. which is like which is cool fine, like I think that's a nice add, little character it's thing cool but enough you but also just like actually I was I was writing this is a little bit of a side note but like I've been writing something recently that is pretty much just like it, it, it's effectively before sunrise but disc golf um and Ooh. yeah i i don't know if i'm gonna keep it like that but that's that's sort of where i'm going with it right now please do and that I've, sounds so cool um i don't know how much of the way through it i am but i have kind of just been thinking as i've been i'm kind of not planning it out much and i'm just kind of like trying to feel out these characters as i write them and at several points i'm just thinking like i think we need to know more about this person like if I, I still actually don't know at the end, like, if I want it to end with them being together or not. I'm kind of still feeling that out. But I've been thinking, like, okay, if we are going to, like, have a chance to ship these people, I, I need to throw in more. Like, they need to learn more about each other. We need to learn more about them. So I'm, I've been, like, a lot of the challenges that have come up with this have just been, like, who are these people? Who can they, like, what sides of themselves can they show to each other? I think we could have used, like, one more thing for Deborah because it's a side plot. We don't need it to take up a lot of time. It doesn't take up a lot of time. I don't think it needs to take up more. But I think we needed, like, one more, like, personality trait. Some, something, like, a little bit quirky about Deborah that like we could just throw in it doesn't have to be like crazy quirky she doesn't have to be natalie portman in garden state but oh, like yeah yeah sorry i saw that recently and i think that's like a little too as an example of going too far in the other direction no but, but that, just, that, like, that, that's uh, i understand what your comparison is that 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 makes some sense yeah but just like ha- tell us one more thing about her and have like one more thing that they connect over and i think a really easy thing is just have him show her his little mixtape deal. That's a thing you already threw in. They already like music with each other. You'd be like, you're into that? Cool. I'm going to make a little thing that, like, have him remix Deb- the the Deborah songs and, like, mash them up. I don't think that would be a good mashup, just by nature of those two songs. But something I didn't like any of it. The, he, all of his mashups were trash. They were all trash. All, they weren't good. But yeah. <laughs> bro, listen to to the Beck. Actually, I I, I kind of like both of them. I like the Beck Deborah better. But listen to all that. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a sick song. No, I meant I meant his his remixes. Yeah, his oh, remixes. Like, I know what you they, mean. They, yeah. No, Ooh. they they put the Was He Slow one on the uh, album for this movie. I did like the Was He Slow one. Mm-hmm. But I think oh, that gosh. other ones like they kind of play a couple other ones, and it's like they're just there to be there. You know what I mean? Like it's I not get like it. YouTube mixes, like YouTube remixing some funny news clip. Like that's 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 the kind of vibe. Yeah, like the apparently kid. Maybe this is 2003, and this is before <laughs> YouTube existed, and he's inventing YouTube mixes. Yeah, I, I, I that mean, would be great. Actually, the state of the iPods might. There's there's a chance that it's like 2008, maybe. It's yeah, it's 2000 somewhere. Yeah. Well, he also, he's stealing, he's been stealing cars since he was a kid, so when he was a kid, iPods would have been a big thing, so I think he's Right, he gets, like, the time. first iPod, which I think is, like, 02 or something like that. Yeah. Why, 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 why was it set for iPods? Maybe to, ex- it's easier to explain, because when, when, when did this release? 2017. Yeah. Maybe because... To explain why he has a, I would guess this takes place in the two thousands. To explain why he has so many, I, I don't know, because you could just put all of that on a phone and it's the same effect. I think. Yeah, but not not if you want some nostalgia though. I think Edgar Wright kind of wrote this to be a little because 
the, that is why like it, it's a really small moment but it does i think the the moment that raises that question a little is when they steal the car from the guys and he's got the like very 2017 vape and his very mm. 2017 phone playing spotify from his bluetooth speaker or whatever like it's a really small moment but if you just take that out and make it slightly different like we could believe that this is maybe 2009 and like nobody's using spotify like that that's true it could also be like a timeless sort of thing like not timeless in the sense of like the themes or the way it's written but timeless in the sense of like it could kind of be any time between like today and like or today meaning 2017 and like you know 2001 2002 like it kind of doesn't matter what time period it is what matters is like the effect that each of these little things has stylistically so like the ipods are like you know he's very old school if you look at his mixes all of them are on cassette tapes right like something you can't play in pretty much any modern car ever it's sort of that almost like sort of retro he's almost like that sort of like retro vinyl kid type guy Mm -hmm. and i think that was kind of the point of him which may actually be a little bit of what makes him feel sort of obnoxious ish because you know he feels almost like a hipster ad sometimes and not all the time like i think it's cool like i like the little things like i even going off what you were saying, Evan, about, like, giving Deborah another moment, maybe, like, it would have been cool if, like, Deborah was also like that, and that's why they vibed. And maybe, like, that's kind of what they have in common. Like, she not only finds the mixes, but, like, listens to them, immediately knows kind of what he's going for, and maybe makes, like, suggestions about, like, have you tried it like this? Maybe, like, kind of on the spot mixes a couple things up, too. Yeah. You know, just to add a little bit of layer and depth to her character that would also give them something in common other than they're both attractive people in a heist movie. Because that's another thing that I that I don't like about the way that, not just the way the female characters are written here, but the way that they tend to put you, they tend to try to get you to empathize with the main character more, is to give them a love interest for the sake of giving them a love interest. Like, to give them something specific to fight for, which, honestly, in this case, I don't necessarily think Baby even would have needed. You could have expanded Joe's character and had that kind of be the thing that he cared about. Yeah, I think you need you know? somebody, like, other than him. Like, he can't be a complete loner. Exactly. Because then uh, Doc has nothing to put pressure on. But I think, Precisely. yeah, you only really need Joe for that. You you need one of them, not both. One of and them. I think it's, fi- you don't, you I think it's fine both. that you have both. Like, it, I, I don't think that's a problem that you have both, but, like... And even if to do the romance angle, you wanted to make sure it was Lily James, I think she's doing a great job in this. I think that would have been fine. But you would have then given more time to, like, have it be something more than, well, she has a nice voice, she's very pretty, she reminds me of my mom, and that's all I need in a woman, really, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. It has good taste in music. That's, like, like the four things about her. I don't even know if she has good taste in music, to be honest. To him, she has good taste in music. I think she's she's singing one song that he seems to like because because he thinks she's pretty i don't know that he he even really likes the song maybe he does but i don't know dudes be doing that dudes do that just like, i mean oh, fair yeah, that's a i've done song. that i've yeah. done that i feel like we all have but it's yeah. like i, I again, can't say it, I it makes it it makes everything be feel again a little more service level especially with the way that like it feels like she again she's written to be a love interest but she's not written as an actual person none of them are and that's that's a big part of the problem is surrounding everything with this one character and having everybody kind of be a tool for that for a character who's also not really a character either he's kind of a like an archetype if you think about it because we don't learn enough about him to really get on his side about much yeah and it's too bad because i think his like very base construction of like guy who is sick at driving and like time stuff to music like that's a that's just a two cool things right there and is like a very ethical criminal that's those are three really strong protagonist qualities well not for me but for me that's that's the third thing for me pretty good stuff they could be if they're done right right Right. and i think i think those three elements are done right here he just doesn't have much of a personality outside of that he has Um, a southern accent yeah he does have a southern accent and it, I kind of like his southern accent here too. It's like a little bit. Slow. No, I like, like it. It's not there. I like his Han Solo vest jacket. I think that's cool. 
I could do without that. Um, but, <laughs> like, I, it's kind of funny at the one part where, like, he's he's making, like, the disguise in the mall and he grabs the sunglasses. And it's like, <laughs> he feels like he needs a, like, you could just lose the vest. You don't need another jacket but if you on lost, top if you that. lost sunglasses, it would have been a way better disguise. Probably, like, yeah. Because he was wearing sunglasses before. You would be looking for a guy with sunglasses. They haven't seen your eyes, necessarily. Mm-hmm. Well, he had one popped out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they've seen one, one eye. Out. It's not the same, though. Like, I feel like that's a very specific look. It's like having a face tattoo. Why didn't Jamie Foxx just shoot him when he accelerated? Um, Because Jamie Foxx have didn't have time. He didn't have time because he got he got The dead. gun was to Which his head already. Thing. Baby just straight up murders a guy. Something that okay. he has shown he's not going to do. I did want to talk do. about that, though, back on... Going back to your topic. I um, moved. It, yeah, I I do like that when... A, a positive, because we've, we've been listing a lot of negatives of this movie, and I still like it, and a positive that I have Yeah, we should list more is, positives, actually. Nah. I, I think we have, and so, <laughs> Jelani doesn't have any positives. Well, me and Evan have some positives. I think we'll get to that by the end. But I think a positive writing thing that this movie does is it presents Baby with a lot of choices. A a lot of chances to do a more immoral or criminal thing, and he chooses not to. And I think that, like, there's, there's some good stuff with that, and it pushes him to an extreme. Like, it keeps pulling him back into this world, and he's like, I'm going, like, non-violent, nobody gets hurt, nobody gets hurt, nobody gets hurt. Now I'm at my limit, and now I will kill someone. And I like that it doesn't shy away from that, like the end of Batman Begins or something like that, or a Disney villain mm. death, where it's like, oh, I didn't really kill him, he just fell off the off this broken cliff. He Even though bats. John Hamm does fall to his death. But yeah, I noticed that this time too, is like, he falls to his death, but Baby shoots him and at that point, I think it's pretty fair to say we know he's been shooting to kill. That does not feel like a cop out death. He's not like, oh no, John Hamm, don't fall. Ah, like yeah, which is I do love that moment. He's like, fuck deaths. you, buddy, and then he he sh- you, he shoves him off basically, <laughs> like he's blatantly killing him. Yeah, and he straight up kills bats. Like that's yeah, that's even more that. severely. That than felt like a final kill, destination kill. Mm, that, that was that bad. is kind of a final destination kill. That, that was you bad. It. Back to my point, why didn't he just pull... The gun was to his head. He could have just pulled the trigger and the car would have stopped. He didn't have uh, time. I don't know what to tell you. I, he he didn't have time. have time. I don't know. He had enough time to accelerate to the point where the, the pole came through the windshield. In real world logic, yes, Jelani, but not in movie <laughs> logic. Not in the logic in which Baby had to survive so the end of the movie could happen. Yeah, not in, not in the logic of, of I'm going to restart this song to time it properly with this heist. That was exactly. kind of funny. I was like, needed to restart wait, wait, wait. the song. I got to restart. What? Go. <laughs> and they were like, what? But yeah. they were too dumbstruck to do anything but listen to what he said. Yeah. And then he's like, okay, now go. And they listened to him. I'm like, yeah. what? I love that moment so much. That was good. Yeah. That's also a handicap that's never used, though, is the idea that like he needs to sync up to the song. Or, like, he'll mess mm. something up. Like, that's a cool setup that is never really touched on again. Yeah. Well, how much more do we have on your topic? Because that might transition us a little bit into mine. Um, I think there's a little bit. Th- th- there's a little bit more in the okay. sense of, like, sort of the, the j- just the way that the other character presented Duke. Because, again, I think a lot of this comes down to character motivation. I think that the motivations for Baby especially shift around a little too much to the point where it almost seems like we he doesn't really have one. Because we get the sense that, like, yeah, he's doing this to pay off a debt, but then he's doing it because, you know, half because Doc threatened his family, but also the other half because he kind of wants a better life and he does kind of enjoy doing this, but he's also hesitant because he's seen them kill people and do bad shit. But then, like, you know, still that's more motivation than we get for the other characters because, again, the female characters are written to just play off male characters, essentially. Like, that's entirely what Darling is. Oh, like, is it, this doesn't pass the Bechdel test, I don't think. Nope. I don't Most think the Bechdel don't. test is... Yeah, I don't think the Bechdel test is actually that good of a test, because, like, Inception passes the Bechdel test on a technicality, but I don't feel, Ooh, like, yeah. in spirits that movie. Evan it's... doesn't like women. That's <laughs> what he's saying. Doesn't like I should have seen like that coming from me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Evan doesn't I'm like sorry. women. No, Angel, he, he, there is a long history of Jelani um, c- 
calling me out for being different forms that's some, of, like... So there's a long history of your misogyny. That's good to know in case the, I come yeah. back. There's a long, his- <laughs> I'll there's be a long for history that. of, like, I say something like... <laughs> I, what was the, I think it's like I was like yeah I kind of like Anne Hathaway's Catwoman a little better than Zoe Kravitz and you're like uh, a racist <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> what what there is a long history <laughs> oh that's great uh, that's great I mean uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest if I was on that episode I probably would have sided with Jelani on that yeah but I like Zoe yeah. Kravitz as Catwoman too she just doesn't yeah. have as good of a mask. I definitely think Anne Hathaway gets a little too much flack for her Catwoman. I think her Catwoman was fine. Her I do Catwoman's think Zoe Kravitz is great. better, but I think it get, a lot of that comes down to the writing. I do think Anne Hathaway is a good Catwoman. Yeah. That, that being said, that being <laughs> yeah. said, this movie um, does not pass the Bechdel test. <laughs> no, it does not. No, it does not. And again, that's not always that's not always a good test. No, that's not always a good test. But I do think that it's it's something that like I didn't think about it while I was watching it, but that does not surprise me because again. They're ri- there's two female characters and they are simply written to play off whatever whoever their male counterpart is. Like Deborah's story is entirely based on Baby. Darling's a lot of is pretty much entirely based on Buddy. Yeah, she has no and agency. She has no agency. She has no real personality outside of being, you know, John Ham's hot girlfriend. Hot and crazy, which I hate to even say because like because like she she has hints that she could be an interesting character. Like right. the fact that she is messed up enough in the head to be like, you know, she's kind of getting off on the fact that she wants that she wants Buddy to kill Bats. Like she's kind of like setting it up. And yes, Bats is being an asshole, but like that in my head, I'm like, that's kind of interesting. I would love to then see more of her kind of taking control because again, Buddy is showing some hesitation that she is not showing. So you wonder like how much of this is her be is her manipulating Buddy. And how much of it mm-hmm. is, you know, Buddy making his own choices. But they make very clear by the end that Buddy is just doing what he wants to do. He really isn't being manipulated. Yeah. And that scene you never know? matters. She also died in the dumbest way possible. She really did. I remember watching her death uh, the other night when I was rewatching it. I'm like, I remember it being way cooler than this. And it was not. It get was in the car. Out of nowhere. Just get yeah, in the car. Doing? This is the thing that criminals do in every movie, though, that I that I think is very stupid. Is like, they just come out guns blazing like not okay. taking cover the shot of her with like the dual wielding machine guns is kind of sick though like it's yes cool. but like, and it her, does like, not only get shot in the like, head but cool. then after she gets shot in the head and is dead as a result she gets lit up by the cops after that as if well that's just sure. cops dude she's not that's, a vampire that's just, that's you don't cops. need to you don't need to decimate her to make sure that she's dead she's a regular person yeah that's but cops, real man. life atlanta police that's very just, true there and police even, in like, general that, this wasn't happening at the time of that movie but they're making like a whole police train like they're they're like over militarizing their police specifically there this is I've a heard. good point this, I, this, I, yeah. I was I was not at all what edgar point. wright's going for but plus like, no it's not that's part of it is like it's clearly not his intention but that is a good way to make it kind of make sense plus she wasn't white one thing you can say for this movie though it is not copaganda like the cops are always the bad guys in this movie no not, not at all super like bad guys but not explicitly yeah like they're well they were, like... that that guy that one guy the undercover one I, he was weird the one that came back at the end i forget his name the, the one that one. the one that booked um bats before in like 98 oh or oh the, but that was a butcher? weird moment though no the guy that worked for the butcher the, oh the yeah the guy guy, the guy yeah. uh d- d- during the tequila scene Yes, mm-hmm. okay, I remember. The guy who's like, about, do yeah. I know you? And then he's like, he yeah, he's busted back, yeah. me back in 98. Right, he kills Which Doc. at least shows, which mm-hmm. at least shows this movie takes place after 1998. We mm-hmm. do know that. Okay, yeah, there's a, yeah. Um, Have we met But before? yeah, no, I... Well, you're still alive, so I guess we never met <laughs> That That shot didn't pass the rule of cool, though, Evan. Yeah, it was, it, it was, I, I don't think it was as cool as you you think, as you th- what, think the it was cool. Darling. Yeah, I don't think it. She that was just a, a really stupid way to die. It felt like just a scene get, from a Machete movie, which is fine. That's fun. I haven't seen Machete. I haven't either. I no. haven't either. I just know that I, I just know there's a lot of <laughs> scenes like that with women with women holding up really big guns. Nice. It's kind of like the Punisher. It's like everybody. It's like everybody's the Punisher. It's a little matrixy. Mm. It's like everybody's the Punisher, but uh, but Machete, but but Machete is in it. 
I the way when they were walking or running away from the bank and just like you said with no cover, Angel, that I was expecting a bullet to j- just decimate them, just kill them yeah. at any moment. I was but expecting that only happened them. to one of them. Like Buddy was fine right. until because because Baby had to kill him at the end of the movie. And right. Again, we're only talking negatives. I do love that whole. <laughs> I do like that Buddy became the bad guy. Like I, I think it would have made slightly more sense for it to be Doc, but Doc. at the same time, I don't know that I would have bought it as much because you know, like Buddy is like a physical force to be reckoned with. I feel like Doc was not that. No. No, he couldn't even dive out of the way of the car. No, there, there, there was no way. I do not think that that would have hit as well. Also, I mean. Knowing what we know now, I I do not want, I I will not wish for anything where I see more of Kevin Spacey in a movie. I cannot, I do not want yeah, that at all. I do so, like him as an actor, but yeah, this, I think this was like his last movie, pretty much, oof, before well, the stuff broke. Yeah, yeah, it, it it was. It was his last. It was his last movie because this was also around the time he got kicked off House of Cards. Yeah. Um. I, but, I it yeah. was too bad because I remember when this movie came out, like. He, I would have named him as one of my favorite actors because I was a big House of Cards fan at the time too. And then I yeah. think like three months. So later, then you Kevin something. spaced yourself from him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that unfortunately House of Cards was already kind of going downhill before he had to leave. This is true. But yeah, it's I I feel like this movie is more like Kevin Spacey has played like so many villains that like knowing what we know like honestly because ansel elgord's done some shit as well that's come out and i feel like oh has he? Like, oh i think he like had some like texts to a minor that were i don't oh, know the details, oh but i did hear about i that. remember it came out like i, I want to say like 2020 or something but i remember re-watching it after that and i was like it, like knowing that about Ansel Elgort makes this movie feel grosser because like you're not supposed to like Kevin Spacey in this so like I can kind of that, that's kind of the thing he plays like bad guys a lot so I feel like yeah post cancellation it's less of a problem for me like watching it and B- Baby Driver is kind of like he's not prominent enough in this where I feel like I felt where I didn't feel like it was as big of a deal watching this because again he's not the focus yeah and he's the bad guy you know and he's the bad guy you know i don't love how they make him a little more sympathetic toward the end but i think when they were making this like they didn't know what was going on with him and i also like i don't think that they would have changed the ending anyway no like i that's not something that i feel like edgar wright would do you know like obviously and like they replaced him in all the money in the world Right, but that um, came out after. For these same reasons. But that, yeah, exactly, that came out after. Like, they refilmed everything with Christopher Plummer. 